What's happening YouTube? Thanks for tuning back into the channel tonight right here with the Rust Belt Mechanic. So tonight we're going to be talking about something a little bit different. We're going to be talking about training new technicians. What kind of information that you usually want to give them as well as maybe some of those hard knocks moments where you really want them to learn based on their mistakes. Stay tuned, we'll get into talking to some younger technicians on how I did with the training for them. So for the last couple of years, I've been a sort of trainer here at the uh, dealership that I work at, and I've been helping to lead newer technicians on into this uh, form of automotive work. So how I train them is one of the things that people ask me quite often. And one of the biggest things that I always say is you need to be a person that learns from their mistakes. So. First off, we're going to interview today is my big old buddy, Captain Ron, and we're going to get some of the input on how I did with the training on him. So to give a little bit of background on my buddy, Captain Ron here, uh, he's been here in the shop at the dealership for about what, the last two and a half years or so? It's almost been past three years. Almost three years. How about that one? So he's been through the Chrysler CAT program over at Sinclair Community College. And in the six and a half weeks, or is it eight weeks now that you do on-hand training here at the dealership, they do eight weeks on, eight weeks off. He's here with me and was shadowing me for the time that he was there at uh, Sinclair. So with training, one of the biggest things, like I said, that I always say is to learn from your mistakes. You are going to make mistakes and that I guarantee. Isn't that right, Ron? You guys know how I've made mistakes. <laughs> if you guys follow my channel, you know I make mistakes. Yep, he does. And you will, I guarantee it. But the biggest thing is to learn from those mistakes and not mess them up again. If you mess something up a second time, that's where we're gonna start having problems and that's where disciplinary action usually sets in. But learning from those mistakes is one of the best things that can also help to teach younger technicians. For instance, say we've got a uh, vehicle in here and you're trying to teach them the diagnostic processes uh, even as simple as trying to diagnose a ticking noise coming from the engine. I would let them go through and do what they would think would be their diagnostic process on listening for it, uh, maybe getting a tube out to be able to listen to different areas, getting a stethoscope out to listen for those ticks, and then after they get into about 10 or 15 minutes of their own diagnostic process, that's where I kind of step in and like, hey, with this kind of a noise, what would this kind of sound like if you were to look over here in this area? And maybe along those lines, what I tell you would be a much faster way to be able to diagnose it. Yeah. But where would you be if I came up there and just said, hey, stick the stethoscope on that head? Kind of, kind of pointing it out there at that point. Exactly. You're, you're not, not teaching, you're telling. Yep, you're not learning the actual process to it. And that has the same ramifications of diagnostics and anything else, especially when you get into electrical. Mm -hmm. I know there was a couple of times where, you know, me doing like the 20 questions asking yep. would be one of the best ways to be able to show you how to do it. You know, for instance, electrical things, you know, what would I do with you most often? Uh, most often it would be like, it, it's just you, you help, you don't tell me how to do it, but you do break it down to basically taking the car and sectioning it off, you know, find out where, you know, if you got a certain thing that's causing an issue, where would that be coming from? What would be going along with it that would be causing any issues? And just kind of breaking it down in sections and kind of working, you know, working down to your lowest common denominator, I guess you could say, uh, to find your issue. Yep, exactly. And if I was just to say, okay, take your meter and I want you to test this pin to this pin. That's where you go directly. And because of the 11 to 13 years of knowledge of my diagnostics with this, obviously I see these problems all the time so I kind of know where to look ahead of time yep. and that comes with experience but you don't want to throw experience at a new technician no. you want to throw 
the knowledge of how to diagnose things and go through the individual processes to be able to do it. If I just show you what's wrong, you're not going to be able to figure it out for yourself. Now the same thing goes with making mistakes because more often than not, how often do you remember the things that I gave you those individual processes? You don't remember that nearly as no. much. But when you mess something up, you remember that, don't you? Oh yeah, yeah. If you, if it's one of those, it's just like he said before. You know, it's one of those things. Like if you mess something up, you know you messed it up. You know how to fix it, and at that point, you're not going to do it again. Yep. So you're learning from your. It's just like he said. You're learning from your own mistakes, and that kind of cements it up in here. To hey, this comes up again. This is more than likely what it's going to be. Exactly. So that's a viewpoint from me training Ron for the past three years. Now let's get somebody a little bit more fresh in here to see what he's thought about this diagnostic process and how I go about showing him. Let's get McBake on here. Oh, noodles! Oh, that's how we're going to play this now. Hi, guys. <laughs> So this is McBake. He's been here at the shop for going on almost a month now, right? Yeah, three weeks. Yep. We take. Now it has been a different learning experience for him. As I showed you guys before in the interview process with him on what he thought about the dealership at first, mm -hmm. it's not exactly what you thought the work was going to be, was it? No, not at all. Uh, like we said in the first interview, I thought it was all oil changes, simple things, just be kind of like the garage grunt. No, I'm getting dirty every day it's something new every day <laughs> something challenging it's it's different every day there we go now so today this is kind of what made me really want to do a video like this today we had a we'll say a heartbreak of a car come in it's a, a gmc acadia we had come in 2007 and it is the epitome of the rust belt car. <laughs> we'll just say that one. Crusty, rusty, doesn't matter what we touched on that vehicle, it yep. was falling apart and it had some really bad rear suspension issues. Now, there's some things to where I said, okay, I'm gonna let you go with this and do what you think on it. I said, all right, we need to pull the rear hubs, the rear axles are junk, we need to replace those. So I kind of let him go at it. Come back about five minutes later, see him, struggling yes struggling just a bit <laughs> now what's what's the kind of look that you get from me in the side point once you start that struggle process those judging eyes i was on <laughs> him all day he'll stand behind you with his judgy eyes and he'll just stare at you until you look over your shoulder go oh, great now what am i doing wrong <laughs> now normally when they i always keep an eye on him but when he's doing something correct or i know that he's got it got it in the bag to what he's doing I'll, I'll let him be and I'll do his own thing because that's one of the worst things is to have somebody standing over your shoulder yeah. all day long. Yeah. Like that just sucks and you don't want that to happen. But when you get into those circumstances, like he was pulling the spindles and the hubs apart on this Acadia, he was sitting there with a hammer over in the corner trying to just tap this little thing out and uh, pry it out with a pry, yeah, bar. a pry bar. And if you guys have ever tried to get hubs out of spindles, you are not gonna do so with a pry bar. It's, it's not gonna happen. So I just kind of sat there watching, Maybe letting him go at it. With a stick. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let him go at it for about five minutes or yeah. so. And they're like, hey, Maybe there is a better way of doing this. There was a better way. There was. <laughs> so we got the correct tools in there. We were able to get the hub out of the spindle. But the biggest point to this one is if I would have just came in there right off the bat and showed you to hit it, yeah. okay, it would have happened in 30 seconds and you probably right. wouldn't have made it as memorable of an experience or a teaching experience. Yeah, there's that moment of defeat when you're messing around trying to do the things the wrong way, the improper way with the wrong tools, you start to feel defeated and deflated. And if he would have came right away and just showed me, I never would have had that low to hit a high. But, you know, I'm struggling, so you're feeling pretty down, and then you see the light at the end of the tunnel. And so I will always have that moment in my head, just like what you were saying with Ron. It's, I will grab that hammer and I'll say, wait a second. 
this isn't how it works. I know how to do this one because I got my ass kicked by this job before. <laughs> so yeah. that is one of the biggest things is you guys, if you are technicians who are training the next generation of techs to come into, you have to put yourselves in their shoes. You can't always lead them along the path the entire way because there's just too many things to remember in the automotive field. You will never get your point across for them to remember every single time. Now, always you got to think of human nature. You're going to learn the most from your mistakes. The biggest mistakes in life are the one, the ones that which you come to that fork in the road and you're just going to remember that point for the rest of your life because you struggled on it, you had an issue, and you had to get through it. Perseverance is one of the biggest things for memory uh, recreation. So when we get into the automotive field, doing the same thing generally helps. Having the technician get through a lot of those hard to reach areas, hard to get to things, and then showing them a better way afterwards, and they just hit that light bulb moment, yeah. and then all of a sudden, it's all, it it's all good and clear. Yeah. Everything just clicks. Well, I appreciate it, man. You're doing an awesome job here at the shop. Well, thank you. <laughs> so hopefully this video has been a little bit of an eye opener for you guys who are helping to train the technicians of the upcoming generation. A lot of people say that, you know, the upcoming technicians, uh, they're all millennials anyways, and they'll never learn. Well, maybe they learn just a little bit of a different way than the guys of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So you kind of have to keep that in mind. Finding the best way for these technicians to learn is one of the biggest hurdles that you need to get over. So hopefully this one instance can help you guys to get those ideas through to those younger technicians and hopefully help them to get along the process a little bit faster and a little bit easier. Help them to remember some of these steps in a little bit better form. Well, that's about all the information I have for you guys today. We've got all kinds of new videos coming out here shortly. Thanks with the Duramax. We're gonna be doing a rear seat conversion, nifty tools of the week, all kinds of goodies coming up for you, and as well as SEMA. Coming up on November 4th through the 8th, we're gonna be live at SEMA with SP Tools and possibly Milwaukee also in their booths. So make sure you guys stay tuned to the channel for that one, lots of exciting things. Make sure you subscribe, hit that bell notification so you get notified when I come up with cool, awesome content just like this one. I appreciate it, and as always, you guys stay awesome.